Hey there! Today I get to cover one of the more unique characters in Marvel Comics with Deadpool and, just as importantly, Bob. My name is Nate, and welcome to the Gamers Guild. Now, before I wade into the deep end with Deadpool, I want to remind everyone that thanks to the guild's sponsor, Tritex Games, I'm doing a monthly giveaway for Marvel Crisis Protocol. The winner of the first month, Chris Hood, got hooked up with everyone's favorite talking raccoon and tree duo last month. You can enter by being subscribed to the channel and then by leaving a comment on each video that releases in a month. So each comment will be one entry point for that month. So for example, in the month of March, there will be four MCP videos, so four potential points of entry. As well, Tritex is offering an additional 5% off of their MCP products with the code TRITEXGGCP5 at checkout, which is kind of insane because if you pre-order with them, you're already getting 20% off, so this would be 25% off your total order with pre-ordered items. Now, the giveaway should always be of a model coming out the following month so that you can have the next fresh release waiting for you, but since there are some delays going on, we'll just have to work something out ultimately. Now, it feels like it has been far too long since I've gotten to talk about some new characters, so let's dive into the head filled with unicorns, rainbows, and who knows what else. Deadpool has the alter ego of Wade Wilson. He has four stamina, moves medium, is size two for three threat. His physical and energy defenses are at an average 3, and his mystic defense is up at a 4, because who would really want to mess around in his head anyways? Deadpool's first attack is Stab. It has a range of 2, strength of 5 for 0 power, so nothing out of the ordinary here as this attack also has the traditional power building of Deadpool gaining power equal to the damage dealt by this attack. Then we have the Wall of Text that is Bang. It is a range 4 physical attack with a strength of 4 for 0 power, and instead of reading through these next two paragraphs, I'm going to summarize. If Deadpool gets a hit in a wild on his first bang attack, he triggers bang bang, which lets him make another bang attack at the same target. And then, if on that bang bang attack, Deadpool gets a wild in two hits, you get to make a third bang attack. So basically this attack has two conditional rapid fire attacks attached to it, but with it only rolling four dice naturally, you'll need to either boost that number a little bit or get a little bit more than lucky to get off all three attacks. Then finally, we have Duodendum Poke or the Butt Stab. It is another physical attack with a range of two, rolling six dice for three power. And if this attack deals damage, the enemy character gains both the bleed and slow special conditions. In addition to his array of attacks, he also has quite a few superpowers that fit the character quite well. His active Merc with a Mouth costs 3 power and lets you choose an enemy character within range 3, and then that character loses 2 power. A character can only be targeted by this effect once per turn. So not a perfect trade-off, but since this is the only other thing Deadpool can spend power on other than his big attack, this can be a great way to disrupt your opponent's plans. Deadpool then has three innate powers. The first is I Know Karate, and it lets him reroll one die in his attack and defense rolls, making his attacks that much better and his defense line look a little bit more than average. He also has unicorns, rainbows, and sugar plums dancing through his head. This means that Deadpool cannot be pushed or advanced by any mystic attacks or enemy superpowers. This ability makes Deadpool really difficult to maneuver off of objectives. And while I'm not sure why it works against Spider-Man's web snare, it does make Deadpool look that much better. Then finally, he has Healing Factor 2, which is great on his injured side. And really, you would only be considered lucky if it gets to activate at all on his healthy side, since he only has 4 health. But with that defensive reroll, who knows, you might just get lucky. But there are some pretty big changes on his injured side, speaking of. The first is that he goes up to 6 stamina, making him quite a bit more durable and lets that healing factor shine. As well, he loses the butt poke attack and gains maximum effort. This is a range 2 7 strength attack for 4 power. On a wild, the attack gains something called Dance Party. It allows Deadpool to make an advance short after the attack is resolved, and then each character within range 2 of this character suffers 1 damage then Deadpool gains one power for each damage dealt this way. So this is a fantastic ability, and it can even let Deadpool chain maximum effort back to back, 
but it is worth keeping in mind that not only will Deadpool be damaging allied characters and not giving them power when he has his dance off with Star-Lord, he will also be hurting himself. If that sounds crazy to you, well, it did to me too, but I asked just to make sure on the rules forum and Deadpool does count as being within range 2 of himself. And since Death's party doesn't say other, I can just assume that Deadpool isn't practicing sword safety whatsoever, and why would he be? And finally, Deadpool gains a new innate power called, alright, now it's serious. This really helps make up for his low stamina on his healthy side because it says, this character always counts as healthy instead of injured for the purposes of contesting objectives. Now granted, the preview of this card said a little bit more, but the preview we got was apparently an early test version, so unfortunately there are no shenanigans that can be pulled off with cards like All You've Got. So really Deadpool only has one thing I would ever really consider a straight up downside, and that is his healthy side only having 4 stamina. The average defenses with a reroll help a little bit, but Deadpool should be a character that is pretty easily dazed, which lets that healing factor of 2 go to waste on his front side. But with the help of Exceptional Healing, a tactic card from Wolverine and Sabretooth's pack, Deadpool can probably make his front side a real pain to deal with, especially if you haven't activated him yet, because you can then heal himself back up quite easily. Alright, so let's talk about what Deadpool does have going for him. And to start, he has his own personal consistency engine with I Know Karate, which makes his normal strike above normal, and then his butt poke attack being able to apply a couple of status conditions is going to be really nice, but it does cost a decent amount of power for just 6 dice. Maximum effort though can be really great when you have several enemy characters around to gain power back from and after dealing out some free guaranteed damage. Just be sure that you aren't hitting too many allies in the process, and keep in mind Deadpool's own health. Really though his attacks are good, but nothing crazy for a 3 threat character, where Deadpool really though begins to shine are his powers. His rerolls I've already talked about, but Mark with a Mouth is really great. Sure you are spending more power than your opponent is losing, but Deadpool doesn't have a ton of things to spend power on anyways, and being able to take power away from a character who wants it is really strong. Just as an example, think about taking away Captain America's ability to bodyguard, or Magneto's defensive boost dice. The list of effective ways to use this can just go on and on. As well in his superpower department, the combo of not being able to easily be pushed or advanced off of points, and getting to count as healthy on both sides, is a really nice synergy just built into the card straight up. Now I want to talk about Bang before I get into the affiliations, because I don't have it as a huge win, unless you count flavor, then yeah, it's really cool. But it is an extra attack that Deadpool has that really doesn't detract from his card. Zemo and Taskmasters are some comparable 3 threat characters, and neither of them have this additional range 4 attack, so I can't really complain about it being there. But to really unlock this attack and try to get the triple Bang, you need extra dice. So Doom Prophecy is definitely a card worth keeping in mind with Deadpool, much for the same reason as Punisher or Agent Widow. You'll still need your dice to cooperate to a degree, but with 7 dice and a reroll, you should at least be getting a hit in a wild to get the second attack off. But otherwise, the bang attack doesn't have a ton of appeal to me if you're not able to boost it in some way. Now, as far as affiliations go, we know Deadpool is going to join Cable in his X-Force, but we have very limited details about that affiliation, so I'm not going to dive into that too much. But I do want to talk about the one affiliation that Deadpool wants to be in, and they really want to recruit him as well. And that is of course Kingpin's Criminal Syndicate. Deadpool's unique superpower that lets him count as healthy on both sides of his character card works so well with Kingpin's leadership ability as being able to count as two healthy characters when contesting a secure objective. And then in turn, Deadpool wants to be able to force multiple enemies to him to make his maximum effort that much more effective. And while we have no idea if Deadpool will be in affiliation anywhere else at the moment, there could be a pretty solid case for him joining the Criminal Syndicate since he is a mercenary that has been hired to do many a thing for them in the past. In an overview, Deadpool looks like a really fun 3 threat character that can hold his own really well wherever he ends up. And while his healthy side is made of glass, his injured side should prove pretty annoying to deal with for your enemies. And now, how could we talk about Deadpool without bringing in his own personal henchman with Bob, Agent of Hydra? Bob's real name is Robert Dobolima, 
and, well, he's just a normal guy in a world of superpowered beings. As such, he has three stamina, moves medium, is size two, and is two threat. As well, all of his defenses are at two, making Bob the epitome of a glass cannon, as you will soon see. His first attack is Hydra Pistol. It's a physical range three attack with a strength of four for zero power, but this attack will get Bob a guaranteed power, which is nice. Then Bob whips out his rocket launcher for some excessive violence. This physical attack has a range of four, strength of nine, and maybe best of all, costs zero power. But there is a catch. Bob has to have a loaded token in order to use this attack. And after the attack is resolved, Bob loses all loaded tokens he has. But there are some other spicy effects that come with this attack. Before damage is dealt, Bob will deal two damage to all other characters within range two of the target. Again, this will include Bob and your allies, so make sure Bob is pointing the rocket in a decent direction for you. Also, before damage is dealt, Bob will be thrown short away from the target character, and the target of the attack will get to resolve the throw. Then if at that point Bob isn't dazed, he suffers three damage, subsequently becoming dazed and truly becoming a glass cannon. Robert then has three superpowers, the first of which looks a little bit familiar. Hydra Tactics is an active power that costs two and lets Bob choose another allied character within range two of himself. Then Bob places himself within range one of that character. This is the same ability that we've already seen on Bucky, and if Bob does manage to build up a lot of power, he can use this a lot and get across the board since it doesn't have a once per turn limit. But that power is probably better saved for his next ability, Make It Spicy Bob. This active superpower has a staggering cost of eight and an action, but it gives Bob a loaded token for his big attack. And finally, Bob has the innate power, Moi Caliente, and it gives him one loaded token at the start of the game to make sure Bob can at least make one creator on the battlefield. And as we look at his injured side, Bob has gained one new superpower, and it's quite the one. The aptly named But How can let this glass cannon stay around on the battlefield much longer than he has any right to. It says if Bob doesn't have an activated token and would be KO'd by having damage tokens placed on him, he gains a day's token instead. During the cleanup phase when you would normally flip Bob's card, it remains on his injured side and Bob loses three power. You otherwise then follow the normal steps, here meaning that any status conditions and damage on Bob will disappear. As well, if at any time this is the only character you control, you lose the game, making Bob's immortality a little less helpful. But this really cool ability will keep Bob alive and a constant threat and presence that needs to be kept an eye on because him getting off a second excessive violence attack would be a lot of value for a two threat character. And because Bob would daze himself before he gets an activation token, but Hal would still keep him alive even after a rocket launch. As far as my overall thoughts for this lovable agent of evil, well, to say Bob is unique is an understatement. But he really is a character that is difficult to break down without getting him on the table first because he's going to play very uniquely. He'll get off at least one rocket launch to leave a crater on the board, but after that first one, the second one is much harder to make happen because he will lose three power whenever he revives himself on his injured side. But if you're able to trade Bob's healthy side for the healthy side of a three or four threat character, plus the splash damage, you're probably pretty happy with how Bob is doing. From there, Bob can run away with an objective or just sit on a back secure and be a good two threat character. At this point, we have no idea what affiliation Bob is going to get to be a part of. Honestly, if any affiliation at all. The Cabal would love to have him and it seems likely where he'll end up at least in there, but only time will tell. As for where Bob wants to be, well, probably anywhere that can feed him power. So the Inhumans, Magneto's Brotherhood, or the A-Force will be very helpful in gaining Bob enough power for him to make another spicy rocket reload happen. Outside of those, any of the affiliations that want to go wide will always take a glass cannon. So the Guardians, or maybe even the Criminal Syndicate, and again, if he ends up being the first two threat Cabal member, then Red Skull and soon Sin will be happy to pick up their sometimes loyal henchmen. Now, before I finish today's video, I want to talk about a couple of the Deadpool-centric tactic cards that also come in this pack. First up is Chimichanga. For one power, Deadpool can bring his dream food onto the battlefield in the form of an asset objective token that, if dropped, can be picked up by anyone. 
And while this new objective token doesn't score victory points, it does give the character holding it one power and the option of removing one damage or one status condition at the end of their activation. So it really isn't a bad card to bring, but you would probably want to wait and give it to Deadpool on his injured side because he'll probably just end up giving up his favorite food to the enemy if you use it on his healthy side. Also, because of how Kingpin's leadership works, you're totally able to pass the chimichanga around amongst your team, though it doesn't really make the most tactical sense, but you gotta admit, Kingpin walking up behind Deadpool, tapping him on the shoulder, and taking the chimichanga is a pretty fun image. And the last tactic card I want to talk about is Yoink. Again, this is a very Deadpool-centric card, as it just gives him interesting ways to interact with his pals. For two power, Deadpool can choose one of the following effects. He can teleport off of a nearby cable, use one of Domino's grenades without paying the attack's cost, but it will still cost an action to use the attack, or take an objective from Wolverine, an allied one, that is, and even steal away the very valuable loaded token from an enemy Bob. So if you are playing an X-Force list that is composed of at least a few of these characters, it is certainly one that might be worth bringing to the table. I mean, the teleport off of Cable alone is almost a range 5 leapfrog at its best, and that's a really great top end for this card, and the low ends can still be quite impactful. But that is all I have for these new additions coming to the game soon. Although I am curious, which Deadpool sculpt are you going to use? The Prancing Deadpool with a foosh, or the Now It's Serious sculpt where Deadpool doesn't look quite so happy to see you? Let me know down below, and that will enter you in this month's giveaway. And as always, thank you to all the members of the Guild Hall who continue to support the channel and what I am doing here through Patreon. If that is something that you would be interested in joining, uh, I now have the option to be able to uh, order some tokens and stuff like that through me. So please check out the link down in the description below if that's something you're interested in, as well as check out Tritex Games if you are looking for some particular pieces, especially if you're over in the UK. If you have any questions about these two new wacky characters or anything else MCP related, let me know at one of the links down in the description of this video. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.